Whether it's concern that you'll be able to travel during the next inevitable lockdown or prevent a migrant crisis, digital IDs appear to be suggested for the near future. Thanks, G20. At least we can rely on political opposition to represent an alternative case. There is no opposition. <laughs> What a fantastic story we have for you today. Over at the G20, which amounts to little more than a conference of state leaders and business interests coming together to navigate, control the future, to prevent any alternative voices emerging and to ensure that their interests continue to be met primarily by removing all their opposition and creating one immutable, homogenized narrative. This was said about digital IDs and the inevitability of another pandemic. You can't have another pandemic. You've only just used the last one. So let's have a digital health certificate acknowledged by WHO. I don't want a digital health certificate. How will I know it's legit and sanctioned? It's been acknowledged by the WHO. Good, good. After the horror of the last pandemic has begun to subside, we are already again discussing the necessity for digital ID. Have you noticed that the conditions for digital ID are already being introduced? Have you noticed often when in a supermarket your face is being filmed and observed so that your facial recognition, potential fingerprint recognition are all being collated have you noticed that this time digital ID is being mooted in an interesting way? One, it will be good for future pandemics. Oh, no one likes a pandemic and no one likes being locked down. But also to control immigration, almost as if they've understood the entire political spectrum and are ensuring that wherever you are on that spectrum, digital ID is good for you in one way or another. You could be right wing. You could be left wing. We're going to monitor you and control you, whoever the fuck you think you are, because we don't care. There ain't no wings no more. There's just a centralizing force. And if you think there ain't no centralizing force or no narrative to introduce one, have a look at Macron right now. Are you on the US and the Chinese side? Because now, progressively, a lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake, even for both the US and China. We need a single global order. Let me give you a little bit more background on this story that I painstakingly researched on my own without any help. After Joe Biden returned from Bali, the White House released the G20 leaders' declaration which contained a clause suggesting signatories had agreed to facilitate seamless international travel. What do you mean, by the way, by seamless? We mean digital ID. That's what we fucking mean. To facilitate seamless international travel, countries should build on the success of proof of vaccinations and digital COVID-19 certificates. Let's build on that success. Remember the last couple of years? What do you mean? All that success? Yeah, you know, that success. We you couldn't go and watch your nan die. You know that success where your small business failed. You know that success where the richest interests in the world became inconceivably more powerful and we entered into a nihilistic hellscape. Yeah, the success. What about it? Should we build on it? If you have been vaccinated or tested properly, then you can move around. Have you been vaccinated? Yeah. Have you been tested properly? What do you mean properly? Mm, exactly. So for the next pandemic, instead of stopping the movement of the people 100%, which clock the economy globally, you know, you can still provide some movement of the people. You can provide some movement of the people as long as you blindly cooperate with our centralised edicts. On the heels of the Business 20, B20 Summit in Bali, which, by the way, shouldn't exist. We've already got a G20. Why should it be 20? How much more esoteric do these 20s need to get? Is it just going to be Illuminati 20 within a couple of weeks? B20 Summit in Bali, where the Indonesian health minister called for a digital health certificate using WHO standards, the G20 called for international collaboration to capitalise on the success of digital COVID-19 certificates for future pandemic responses. There's not a global conspiracy, there's just international collaboration. Do you think that the words global conspiracy and international collaboration could be used to describe the same thing. It's not a reptilian overlord, it's a lizard like emperor. According to the 132 page B20 Indonesia 2022 final communique, policy recommendations to the G20 member countries should promote further exchanges in strategic use and sharing of science, technology and appropriate data for crisis detection, creating global coordination framework for future crisis mitigation. Now that's a very, very complicated sentence to have said, but perhaps the most relevant word is appropriate because appropriate means they can do whatever they bloody well want to do with all of the other words like science, technology, mitigation, 
data. Ultimately, what this bureaucratically lubricates our pathway for is more surveillance, more centralized power, greater ability to control a population. Now, I know that we are always ushered into these states with the promise of convenience and safety, but are you beginning to suspect that this convenience and safety is coming at an incredible price and that the ultimate beneficiaries are not you and I with all of our convenience and safety, but centralized forces that are able to make incredible profits and control outcomes in a wide variety of situations, be they political or sociological. Despite the knowledge of transmissibility being publicly available, both the B20 and G20 are still recommending proof of vaccination as a means to travel in the event of a future pandemic. You would be perhaps less concerned about these global decrees being introduced if you thought that your own nation's political, parliamentary or congressional democracy could provide a system of healthy debate and that your media would report on all sides of the conversation, leaving you, the free individual, in a position to make a decision based on the information you've gleaned. But as you know, the media have been co-opted and politics has been monopolised. Here in Britain, the current opposition party, which is basically the same as the party they're in government, have said that they would not oppose digital ID and in fact they would like to present their own ideas on that subject. In the UK, a Labour government could introduce basic ID cards to help count how many people there are in Britain and reduce illegal immigration. Don't say that it's about controlling the population. Say it's about immigration. They've been all whooped up during Brexit. Do you know what would help you control bloody immigration? ID cards. What about passports? We've already got passports. Oh, God, no, a passport is not digital. Well, I sort of use digitally. I mean, you do that thing. No, 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 no. The party is examining the idea of forcing everyone to apply for registration. One of the things that irritates me most about all of the discourse and rhetoric about tolerance and inclusivity, which I believe are ideas that are fundamental to any fair and functioning society, that everybody should be free to express themselves as who they are. Of course, assuming that they're not hurting anyone else. That our morality should not be about about judging other people, but about holding ourselves to a higher standard. What bothers me most is the way that these ideas are used to mask the fact that behind them lurks totalitarianism. The people that expound these ideas most vociferously are people like Justin Trudeau and now a British centre-left counterpart, Keir Starmer. Oh, in order to have a fair and more just society, we're just considering forcing everyone to register for digital ID. Where's your tolerance? Where's your inclusivity? Well, we're including everyone. We're forcing you to be included. Stephen Kinnett, the shadow immigration minister, revealed that an identity scheme was being looked at very, very carefully indeed. And everything you do from now on will be looked at very, very carefully indeed. Arguing that it would be so helpful in reassuring the public that we have control of our borders. Wow, they just identify what your fear is and then attach that fear to their preferred outcome. What can we say to get more power? Just apply that. Are they saying this in order to get more power? Does that work in this case? Oh, right. Yeah, they feel like if they scare people around immigration, then suggest national ID cards, people will be up for national ID cards, which they will then use however they fucking want. In an interview with the Radio Times to be broadcast today, he suggested that almost every EU member state had some kind of identity scheme and it can't be beyond the wit of man to devise one for Britain too. It's a very poetic way of framing it. Can it be beyond the wit of man? Dare we dream even in gentle reverie of a tyrannical Orwellian Big Brother style system where everything you do is controlled? A cashless society where you are stripped of your soul and your most basic identity till you are essentially a human barcode transacting your way into an early grave which I believe is by John Keats. He claimed that it would deter people from entering Britain illegally as he suggested that Labour would aim to reduce the number of people crossing the channel in small boats to zero. The issue of immigration has long been a contentious one. My only ideal around it is when seeking to change the dynamics of your life, don't look at people that have no power, look at people who have power when thinking about how reality might be altered. In a July report by the Tony Blair Institute, I've heard that name somewhere, Tony Blair, yeah, there was a guy with great morals. The Tony Blair Institute recommended introducing universal mandatory digital identity cards to help alleviate the channel migrant crisis. He also wanted to alleviate the Saddam Hussein crisis by going to war with Iraq. But it turns out that the crisis that followed the Saddam Hussein crisis was a much worse one. Tony Blair tried to introduce a scheme like this when he was in power. He's still trying to introduce them when he's not in power. 
I may not be Prime Minister, but I've always got the old Tony Blair Institute. I have to be in charge of that, because it's named after my name. Supporters of ID cards argue that two decades on, the data people readily share with social media sites and private companies has tilted the balance on privacy arguments. Oh my God, they're using the fact that, like numbskulls, we ignorantly share all of our private data. No one ever explained that to me, by the way. Did you know that whenever you were Googling something, all your information was being captured and collated? I sort of understand it now to watch about 25 documentaries on it. I didn't know that in the first place. I thought when I used Google, I was using Google. I didn't know Google was using me. Now they're saying, well, look, they obviously like doing that. Why don't we, the state, take control of it as well? <laughs> that was an accident. Like if you accidentally treaded dog shit, I don't even want the government to come and slap human shit on the underneath of your other foot. I thought you liked doing that. It's an accident. Of course, the ultimate aim of such a scheme is to introduce those much feared words, a social credit scoring system. Do you think that these ideas will bring us closer or further away from digital tyranny? Well, the alignment of pervasive high-tech gatekeeping with an impulse to police ideological and moral conformity is not only possible, but already beginning to emerge. The declaration of a national emergency in Canada empowered banks to freeze and suspend the accounts of freedom convoy protesters without a court order and while enjoying protection from civil liability. Them truckers were only a threat to the interests of the powerful. They were not a menace to society more broadly. They were called Nazis. They were condemned. Bank accounts were frozen, not just, of course, over the truckers, but people that financially supported supported them. Outrageous and clear example of the way that things are heading. We should not be expediting our journey down that pathway. We should be truncating it and assessing it. That is precisely the kind of thing one would expect to see become normalised with the imposition of a social credit system. Add in facial recognition software that can identify individuals attending dangerous protests and other public events and we're left with a vision of a near-term future that can look pretty dystopian. Well, at least we're not seeing new protest laws introduced all over the world to prevent people gathering together on the streets to protest these kind of regulations. Well, at least we've got opposition parties that will speak out against this kind of legislation. Well, at least these ideas aren't being conjured up at international conferences where nobody ever votes, supported by powerful financial interests. Oh no, we're fucked, aren't we? It will be a future in which cutting edge technological advances combined with some of the oldest and most deeply rooted social inclinations of human beings to produce a new form of illiberalism. It seems to me now quite clear that what is being presented to us is a discourse around inclusive diversity and justice. Meanwhile, in actuality, in regulation, in legislation, in practice through big tech and government power, a new type of tyranny is literally being instantiated. I personally believe that much of the rhetoric around social justice and personal freedoms is bang on correct. People should be free to be who they are sexually, to choose whatever identity they feel comfortable with, and we should decentralise power wherever possible. You can be as traditional and as religious as you like, as progressive and irreligious as you like. Live your life however you want to within the generally accepted reason of not hurting one another or perhaps even you might include the planet. The answer to these problems is not less democracy and more control for the state and big corporations. It's obviously the exact reverse. Which direction do you think the narrative is trying to take you right now? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these and remember to sign up to my mailing list. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe just to ensure that you see these videos that we make every single day. More important than any of that, please stay free.